Well, welcome everyone for um, joining the call this evening. Um, my name is um, Delcina. For those of you who don't know, um, and people call me Dell for short, so you'll see a lot of Miss D or Dell um, when I interact in the um, Facebook pages and the um, fan group. So, um, welcome back for those who were in the call last time, and um, for the newbies, thank you for joining. Um, I hope that you know you get everything out of this call that you were expecting and more. Um, so, I always like to start off by, um, again, introducing myself. My name is Dale. I'm the um, creator and founder of CNA to CEO, um, along with Mr. Cheney, Alan Cheney. I know a lot of you guys have communicated with him as well um, on the Facebook pages. Um, we started um, CNA to CEO because, um, obviously, I was a CNA for many, many years. I got my CNA license um, when I was 15 years old in Ohio. Um, I was the only one to pass the state boards um, out of all adults um, on the first go around. So, you know, I was really excited about that. Um, you know, again, just being young and wanting to do something more um, with myself, knowing that at a, as a, at a young age. Um, again, I grew up in Elyria, Ohio, which is a very small town um, in Ohio. Um, I know we have some Ohioans on on the call, so you may know where Elyria is at. Um, so me growing up there, um, it was just me and my sister. My mom, you know, was a single mother. Um, pretty much a lot of women's stories. She was raising two girls on her own, um, so she gave up on herself very quickly. Um, she turned to, um, you know, welfare and Section 8, depending on them to, you know, to help raise her children. Um, so, you know, with that, you know, looking at that as a child, I always said, you know, you know, not that my mom was a bad mother, but I just didn't want to follow in her steps um, of raising my own children, um, you know, on the system. But unfortunately, uh, just like anyone else, well, not everyone else, but, you know, some of us who, you know, who grew up in those situations, you know, if you knew better, you would do better, and I didn't know better. So, you know, when I had my children, of course, I, you know, I depend on, like, oh, i got to get food stamps, and I'm going to get, you know, welfare, and, you know, I'm going to make sure I get Section A, so, you know, it would be easier for me to pay my rent, and, um, you know, I wouldn't have to work as much, and I can be home. Well, sadly, was I mistaken, because I didn't know that kids were so expensive. <laughs> Even as Young children kids are expensive, so you know I, I got my medical assistant degree, and I thought, okay, well, I'll be a medical assistant. You know, I get, that way, if I'm working in a doctor's office, oh, I have all this money, and you know, again, was I mistaken? You know, there came a time where I didn't know when I was going to feed my children, um, and it came down to it was either me get put out or me leave my place. So I ended up going back to Ohio. Um, for about about seven months, I went back to Ohio and just decided that that was not where I wanted to raise my children. Um, that was not the life that I wanted to live. Um, so I took a chance on coming back to Maryland, um, moved in, you know, with my mother-in-law, and, you know, she, she let us stay there, but, you know, it was, she was kind of one of those, you know, you're going to get out there, you're going to do it, you're going to get your own. So we, eventually we got our own place and we were still struggling and we decided to um, go ahead and move forward with, with um, starting our own home care agency. And just a little off the subject, I had went to visit home about maybe about four weeks ago and I had found my goals that uh, I had written down, while I, written down while I was in Ohio. And one of them was to um, get my GED and... Uh, started my own home care agency, which was called iCare back then. Um, so I had both those goals in 2012, and and I took action. And, and here it is two years later, and we, we've been in business. So you definitely have to write your goals down in order for you to believe them and for them to be real, uh, because if they're not written down, they're not real goals. But um, so, again, we came here. 
we, you know, we struggled a little bit, and um, luckily I was a CNA so that by us starting uh, Just Care in Hands, if you don't know, that's the name of my home care agency, um, I was able to work my own, you know, my first clients. I started working my clients. I had about three clients I was working, and I was working a job at the nursing home. And I decided one day um, to let go of the crutch, so I fired my boss. Uh, which was the nursing home, and I decided, you know, no other time than now is right for me to do this. Um, So I quit my job, and I was scared as hell. Um, You know, I kept telling Alan, I was like, I just need to go back to work. As long as I get a job, as long as I keep a job, I know that we'll be, you know, we'll be comfortable. But, you know, I didn't go back to working. So, again, like I said, two years later, um, I'm starting CNA to CEO because I want to help those, you know, just like me, women, you know, and men um, be their own boss. It's possible. You can do it. I did it. So I am sure everyone on this call is able to do it as well. So I just want to um, get into, um, you know, about CNA to CEO. I noticed on the fan page and on the and on the Facebook group page, I get a lot of people talking about the NPI number, um, which, and again, when I worked in the doctor's office, I thought, oh, my God, the doctor has an NPI number. Oh, my God, that is like, you know, that's a secret code of, in the nursing medical field, um, but it is not. It is a code for you to bill Medicare and Medicaid. That's it. In some states, they require you to um be accredited in order to use your MPI number, which accreditation in some states, I know like in Ohio, is pretty expensive. Um, in Maryland, you don't have to be accredited, but you do have to be a Maryland Medicaid provider um, as well as participate in the Medicaid waiver program in order to bill Medicare through your MPI number. So I don't want people to... Uh, you know, get their business going, they have their name, they have their LLC, you've got your bond, you've got your insurance, and then you're stuck because you can't bill Medicare and Medicaid. I don't want you to get stuck there because mainly what I want you to focus on, CNA, CNA CEO focuses on private pay, not private duty, but private pay, non-medical facilities is where you're going to make your money at. Um, Medicare, I know in the state of Maryland, only pays $13 an hour. That's pretty much what I'm paying, my, almost close to what I'm paying my caregivers. So if I'm billing for $13 an hour, I'm not really making any money on the back end. I'm just basically paying people to have a job. So um, not to say it's not important. I, just, I would just say get your private pay clients, um, you know, built up to where, okay, if you do start billing Medicare and Medicaid, that you're not coming out of your own pocket because if you don't forget, they pay twice a month, which is on the 1st and the 15th, opposed to your private pay clients who are paying you every week for how you bill. I bill weekly, so I get paid every week for my private pay clients. So I, I that is what I really... Um, wanted to speak upon. Um, So I know a lot of people say, well, how do we go about getting private pay clients? Well, um, how I started was I just kind of started where I worked at as a medical assistant, um, which is called, you know, you you need to develop your your referral sources. And again, referral sources is, um, as I was explaining to you, I was a medical assistant. So I worked for a rheumatologist where it was a lot of seniors that came into her office. So one day I asked her, I said, you know, can I market myself to your patient? And she said, sure. Um, I told her, you know, what I do, you know, my background. I have my CNA of like 14 years then. So she was like, you know, if you can get clients to sign up, you're more than welcome to have them. So actually I started with um, a very important lady here in Maryland, um, Dr. Aris T. Allen's wife is who I took care of. That was my first private client. Um, and by me having her, you know, she's sitting in the office with another 
patient, and she telling her, oh, well, Dell's a great caregiver. So I kind of got hired by other patients um, just from that office. Um, also, uh, another referral from a family that I was with, um, the daughter was a, is a dentist, um, a very uh, a very well-known dentist in Annapolis. So, again, me having the connection of, 